Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. In this video, we're going to discuss the UMTS soft handover procedures. We're going to start by looking at what we mean by soft handover areas. We'll have a look at how the rake receiver gets involved in soft handover. We'll look at the measurement reporting process. And finally, we'll look at the end-to-end -end procedure of doing a soft handover. So we've got a mobile currently being served by a certain cell. The idea of soft handover is we're going to be going into an area that is covered by another cell and where the mobile is in a connected state. As the mobile moves, the idea is it's a make before break, so we're going to make a connection with this other node B. We're in a two-way soft handover. It is possible that there may be another area covered by three or more node Bs, in which case we might be in a three-way or four-way or five-way soft handover. In order to facilitate mobility, what we need to do is we need to get reports off the mobile. And we're going to do this by sending from the RNC to the mobile some measurement control information. Specifically, the RNC will ask the mobile to do measurements, either periodic measurements, so periodically send me a measurement report, or typically, for soft handovers, event-based triggers. So we'll have event measurements. Tell me when this cell is better than this cell, and the measurement report will be sent. So the mobile is now measuring these neighbouring cells based on this measurement control information. When a certain trigger is met, I'd expect to see a measurement report to be sent back up to the RNC, indicating, for example, to add one of these cells. And that will trigger the actual soft handover procedure. Now, before we get into the details of the soft handover procedure, I just want to talk about the rake receiver. So in a mobile, we have a rake receiver. It's got lots of fingers. The idea is these fingers can lock onto the different multipaths off a node B. So we've got a code coming off this node B, and we can put fingers onto the different multipaths. So a finger is looking at a code, potentially with a different delay or time aspect. The more important aspect is we can take all the information from the fingers and sum it together as a resultant signal. Let's take that one stage further. So I've got a node B here. We're in a soft handover. So in this scenario, we've got multipaths coming down, and we're using some of the fingers for this particular node B. As we do a soft handover, we can utilize some of the spare fingers here to pick up the multipaths from the other node B. Remember, that's using a different code. So different fingers can actually look at different codes. The number of fingers assigned to each cell is going to dynamically change. So as this mobile moves, you can see it sees new multipaths from the new node B, and it adds that to the fingers within its rake receiver. It's worth pointing out this mobile's in a soft handover still, it's in a two-way soft handover. If it was in a three-way soft handover, I'd expect some of these fingers to be assigned to the third cell. So let's have a look at the soft handover procedure. The mobile will trigger it by sending a measure report up to the RNC. When the RNC receives that, it will configure the new cell with a radio link setup procedure. This will be configured in such a way that it looks like the existing cell. The only major difference between these two will typically be the codes that it's being placed on. Now, the new cell can be configured to look for the handset. So the next thing I'd expect to see is an indication, a radio link restore indication, going up to the RNC saying, I've now locked on to the uplink. The mobile is unaware at this point. We're now ready to tell the mobile, and we do this by sending an active set update message down to the mobile via the existing current cell, and it's going to say radio link addition, add this radio link to the active set. And we're going to have the information about the scrambling code of the new cell. Once we're done, we can configure the handset to listen to both cells, but more importantly now, we can send a confirmation. Now, because the new cell has already been configured, it will hear the active set update complete arriving on the RNC. So in summary, we've looked at the different concept of soft handover regions, two-way, three-way, etc. We've identified that we can do measurement reports, and they could be either periodic or event-based. We've looked at the concept of a rake receiver locking onto the different multipaths. And finally, we've gone through the active set update procedure where we add a radio link to the active set to make a two or a three or a four-way soft handover. 
Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training. Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.